Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to have a lot of fun playing with embellishing your garments, your clothes, your kids' clothes, your husband's clothes. And when I started playing around with embellishing my clothes, usually it was because it was some kind of hole or stain or something I needed to cover up. And I have to admit, I've probably gone a little overboard sometimes, but I love to play. And I like to take my something that I buy for, you know, maybe a, a really nice expensive pair of jeans that I find for $20 and then add some embroidery to them and make them stand out like they are worth hundreds of dollars. So my goal when I'm in, embellishing a garment is twofold. It's sometimes it's just to make it stand out so that when you feel like you're wearing it, that it's something special, but I have a limited budget. So it's a nice way of being able to feel like you've got some stylish clothes without having to put out the money for them. And after all, we have these fabulous machines that do such wonderful jobs. Now, we can do a lot of these kinds of embellishment with our sewing machines, even if we didn't have an embroidery machine. And I've done a little child's jacket right here. This is a little denim jacket and it's a size four. It, it, it's hard to believe. It feels like it's older than that. It's a size four or five. But what I've done is I've taken some fabric and placed it in some of the parts that are kind of blocked off and fused it on with a sick and fuse two. And then I've cut some of those pieces up and then fused them just randomly all over the jacket and kind of played around like this on the front. Now, once I've started, I've also added some decorative stitches. You'll see on the back here, these are pop-up stitches. And then along the neckline, I've added some sequin stitches. So in a moment, we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you um, how easy it is to do that kind of stuff. But even if you have a sewing machine and you don't have an embroidery machine yet, there are still lots of ways that you can really pump up uh, a jacket and make it something what you know my granddaughter will love this if she still fit into it she doesn't fit into it anymore but it is kind of fun how you can take any random fabric and fill the space and so the stick and fuse too is perfect and then afterwards I just go along with my sewing machine I'll usually use the reinforced stitch that goes um, forward back forward so it gives it kind of a, um, a heavier look the same way you would get with the denim stitching that you'll see on the jacket. So it's just one kind of cute idea. The very first thing that I ever did was a pair of dress pants. And I'm not a very formal person, uh, but I needed a couple of pairs of dress pants. But I also like the idea of having them embroidered. So what I did was take a tone on tone color and design and by adding a little bit of bling to it, I was able to match my shirt that I would wear with my jacket. And so it became a whole outfit, but it was a little more formal than something that is not tone on tone. If you're looking for something to be a little dressier and to be a little more sedate, having something that's in the same color range and not too extreme a color can really help to embellish that. Now, these I did years ago, but I have worn them again and again. They always wash beautiful. And it's so nice when you're walking with a pair of dress shoes to be able to just have a little bit of that extra style to your pants. Now, this other design jacket, and I have lots. I love embroidering on denim, but this was a jacket that I did at least, I, I don't know, probably 15 years ago. It was all of these designs, they're av available on the MySonet library. And you can see this was what one design was. But at the time, we didn't have a wide hoop. So what I did was I added some extra flowers on the side. And then I added some on the bodice. And, you know, what I noticed at that time was that while I have lots of um, designs on my back, that I really like to have something on the front also. So what I did was I broke up that design and just put it up here onto the top of my, um, whatever you call this area, around my shoulders, to just add a little bit of interest to my uh, front of my jacket. So when I look at it, I feel I can see it. I, I can't tell you how many comments I've gotten from this denim jacket. 
and you can dress it up. You can wear something formal with it and put this on and it just gives it a little bit of a, a lighter look to it. But it's held up and it's um, really done a nice job. Now on the sleeves, I use the metal hoop after my I had already done this years later, I decided I really wanted to add something on the sleeve. So I added the metal hoop and then I was able to just kind of hold it in place with the magnets and then embroider the sleeves and the cuffs like that. And for those of you that do have the metal hoops, they're perfect for this kind of thing where you want to do these odd shapes without having um, too much, you know, interference. I didn't really want to undo the, the seam here. So the metal hoop really held it for perfectly. And sometimes the stabilizer can help you too. When you're working with a metal hoop, there are many different types of stabilizers. There's a sticky stabilizer like this that the paper comes off of it. And if you're working with the metal hoop, you can put it underneath and then the tackiness will hold the, your item in place. I am, if I'm going to hoop this stuff, what instead of taking the paper off like this and having the tacky exposed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hoop it and then I'm going to take a scissors or a pin and just score the top of it and then only take the paper on the top away from the uh, inside edge so that way that the tackiness is not going on the hoop and then you don't have to worry about cleaning the hoop. This can be really a good idea to have also when you are using leather. If you're going to embroider on leather, you wouldn't want to use the fixed stitch to hold your fabric in place and you wouldn't want to hoop leather. So a sticky stabilizer is great because it'll hold in place, it won't move, and then you don't have those extra needle points where you've got the fixed button and there's no decorative stitches. So that's something to be very careful when you're embroidering any kind of a leather jacket or leather garment of any kind is um, think about the stabilizer you're going to use. And often when I'm using different stabilizers, I don't really, um, I, I take a chance. I'll play around with the stabilizer and try it. And then if it doesn't work out, I'm going to learn from that experience. I had that example when I was working with, let me just come over here and pull this shirt up over here. This was a leather shirt, um, uh, velvet shirt that I was embroidering. And I, I love the design. I thought it was going to be glorious. But the embroidery ended up not really showing up all that well. And one of the mistakes I made, and I wouldn't call it a mistake. So I would call it a learning experience. I used a tear away in the stack, in the, um, in the hoop. And then I wanted something on the top of the velvet so that the velvet wouldn't uh, poke through on the stitching. And so I thought, well, maybe the best choice would be the clear and melt, which would sit on the surface. And then afterwards I could tear it away. But the way that the velvet um, and the stitching happened, when I tore it away, some of it stayed. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll come up really close. Some of it, little bits and pieces of it everywhere are still there. And I can't get it away because I can't touch the velvet with the iron. So that was a bad choice. In this case, using a wash away on top, like the dissolve away would have been a much better choice. I am gonna wash this. I'm not gonna dry clean it. I bought, I have another one that I've dry cleaned, uh, that I haven't dry cleaned that I put in the wash and it worked out just perfectly. So using the dissolve away on top would have been a much better choice. And most of the lessons you learn, you learn by trying them. So. You know, you might think something is just perfect. And I might think something is just perfect until we go to do it. And then all of a sudden we realize that wasn't the best choice to do it. Now, last time on Facebook Live, I was wearing this Poppies. This is an unusual denim jacket because it didn't have a short waist to it. And I like the idea that it went longer, but this one went way long. It was like down to here. And it had a belt to it, and it had the traditional cuffs. But all of those, the cuffs were about, you know, six inches too long. So right away, I decided I was going to cut them off. I could have cut them off and sewed them back on, but I think it turned out much nicer to just put a traditional binding on the edge. Somebody mentioned, 
What about a Teflon cover with the iron? Would it get the clear and melt off? It. I've tried it and it didn't do it yet. I have washed it and it didn't get it away. So um, it's going to be one of those experiences that maybe what I'm going to end up doing is putting some, um, you know, Swarovski crystals around and it's just going to be part of the sparkle that nobody's ever going to use. Uh, another suggestion, somebody said, try using a rubbery part of a seam ripper. That might work. I haven't tried that. That's a good idea. I love that. Thank you for the idea. It's so exciting to share all these kind of different techniques and tips. So I appreciate you mentioning that, but I'm going to try that because that one might work without actually hurting the velvet. Now, when this design is in the uh, MySonet library, uh, I just looked up poppies and it brought me this. And I, I love poppy designs. I use them in many different ways. This one is a poppy design that did not have the cutwork needles in it, which you may think, well, that's a problem. But really, it was Oh, it worked out really well because the way that this is done, this is the top of the design here. And then this is the second part, or this is the second part of the design. And when you look at, pot, at cutwork needle designs, they tend to have a lot of tiny pieces that are going to be cut away. And so that really is much easier to use the cutwork needles. But when you're doing something like this, the pieces that are cut away are very, very large. There's no fabric here at all. That is only thread. So when you're looking at this and what you're seeing, that whole section is thread. So what happens when you use a design that is not meant for cutwork needles, it will sew around the shape and sometimes do it a couple of times. Then it stops for you to cut that fabric away. So I cut the denim jacket away in those areas. And then when I touched the start button, it continued on with the stitching. The I used Aquamagic in the bottom, just the sheer Aquamagic. And I had that, the jacket hooped in a 360 by 200 hoop. When I was doing the embroidery for this, because the Aquamagic was there, it was staying nice and solid. And I know that I could, um, when it was done, it was all gonna wash away. Now, if, I, if this had been a design for cutwork needles, after it cut away the area, I would have had to put another layer of Aquamagic underneath it. So this actually ending up saving me time that we weren't using the cutwork needles in this place. I'll show you another example where it would be much better. So the first design I actually did was on the back. And I was originally only going to do this design. Often when I start a project, I will think of it as uh, the beginning point. And I might come back, you know, months later and add more to it and keep doing that for years. So I always look at anything I do as a work in progress. It's not, it's never set. I started back here. And again, I was thinking, it's a shame when I wear it, I can't see any of the embroidery on the front. And I love the poppies. So after I did this about a week later, I thought, you know, I have to come back. And so what I did was come back and I added, if you can just ignore this, I just added the poppies up here on the shoulder. And I did the other shoulder too. And that made me feel happier. I, I love being able to see that. But then I thought, you know what? I still want more. So then I came back and I added a whole other design on both sides. Now, I was lucky that I had the seam here because that guided me to keep me straight. And I also had these pockets that let me know exactly where the design was going to line up. So it was very easy to keep it straight. Now, what was unusual about this, there was a pocket here. And I didn't like the pocket. It, the pocket had a very, very dark. You could see where it wasn't dyed back here. It was a very like dark navy. And when it was in place, I didn't think it added anything to the design. So that's originally why I just did up here. So ultimately I took the pocket off and I thought, well, I'll just add a pocket design like this and then I'll sew it back on. And when I put it back on, I still didn't like it. I felt I missed the cutaway work to it. So then I continued on doing the cut work. Now, somebody asked a question, oh, did I use the cut work needles to cut out or the scissors? This design did not have the cut work needles 
programmed into it. So I did not use it. But I also, I have the ability in the software to add it, but I was much better off in this case using my scissors because there were very large areas. It wasn't small, small areas. One area was like this big. So it was really quick to cut away and it was much, much easier to do. Let me show you another design. In this jacket, this was a cutwork needle design. It had it programmed in. Look at all the tiny areas where I would have to go in and cut. So I was really excited to be able to use the cutwork needles to do this one because, and you'll see again, I did on the, the shoulders up here, I did the same thing. So the cutwork needles are especially good when you're working with small areas because it'll save you hours of time cutting them out by hand. When I did the denim jacket, I saw, I used a size 14 needle and I did not have any problems at all with the coverage. Now, take it for information. Now, when I originally did this pot, this design, the first time I had my designer SE. When I did it this time, I was using the designer Epic 2. And of course we have the, the much heavier piercing power. So I, I think it was easier when you're working with the um, a machine that has phenomenal piercing power it to go over the seams, but it didn't struggle. And I have done that design using other machines and it didn't struggle either. The cutwork needles are very easy to use. Somebody asked a question about that. And I'll bring up a design with the cutwork needles and show you on the machine what they look like when you see the design. It is, it is amazingly simple. When you have the package, this is the package. It does tell you everything to do. And um, when, you, when you look at a design, you'll see how easy it is. Now I'm going to switch over and show you some other project. This is a jacket that I made and it was a, a regular, like almost like a sweatshirt material. And I built this in parts and pieces. I basically added all the flowers. Now these are not sewn on, but this is an example of how I like to do things. Sometimes if I'm not sure if I like something, I might make designs that are three-dimensional like that, and then I'll sew them on with a button. And then I can decide exactly where I want them to be before they're sewn in place. So if there's ever a question, then something like this can be done three-dimensional. It looks nice front and back, but I can pick them up and move them and decide where I'd like them to be. And that is a lot of fun to have that freedom to play. And you can see the designs down here. And then I have added a lot of these Swarovski crystals. There's a little heat setting tool you can do, or you can do it with your iron. Now, in this case, this is the back. And you can see there's a lot of ribbon embroidery designs that were done. And I'm just kind of adding embroidery designs as I go. And then I'll come back over here like this. This was really a simple, plain sweatshirt that really needed a little bit of work because I didn't like wearing it. It was just too boring. So by adding all of this fun designs, it looked pretty cool, but I, I really didn't like the bottom of it. Uh, was kind of boring. So then I took some yellow paint and I painted just with a brush uh, some fabric paint up there. And that's what gives it the color on the bottom of it. And I'll put that down like that. So you can see. Now, if I come back, this was a ready-made shirt and it was silk. So before you go and decide to embroider on silk, make a decision. Are you going to bring this to the dry cleaner all the time? Or is it going to be something that can be washed by hand? And this can be washed, this silk garment, by hand. So I decided to embroider on it. The designs that you're seeing over here were there originally. And then I just added a little bit of pop of color to give it some interest. These are thread velvet designs. So you'll see this one and let me pull it over a little bit higher so you can kind of see it. The thread velvet, after you're done, you cut away the top thread and then it gives you that very velvety look to it. And I have a couple other designs that are done with the thread velvet. On this one, I didn't do anything on the back. But it is kind of a um, nice little shirt to wear with something underneath of it. 
here's another thread velvet design. And when you're looking at these, you'll see they have a little bit of a velvety look to them. This was done in the Majestic Hoop. And then I added a little more embellishment. I have some ribbon and some decorative yarn that I used in the specialty bobbin case. And down below here, you'll see there's an embellishment down near the waist too, where I used a heavy cord in the bobbin to do bobbin work. We're going to go over to the machine in a moment, but I just want to show you a few samples first before we started going any farther. So let me hang those up. Now, this is a wool felt jacket and it was made, I bought it at a thrift store, but it was kind of a, a little bit simplistic. Some of these appliques were there, but there wasn't much else on it. So then what I did was I added some more embroidery, but the reality was this jacket was just a little bit too small. So what I did on the side is I opened up the side and I sewed in a piece of black velvet that added the embroidery into it. And I did that on both sides. And then you can see the way it looks on the side here. In the back, I've added an embroidery just to kind of pull it through. And this is kind of very appropriate for a wool felt jacket. Sometimes a little bit of glitter, a little bit of, um, these are, if you look at these designs, I've used metallic threads with them. And so I'm going to go over and we'll, we'll talk about thread velvet and some of these techniques in a moment. But here's my last one that we're going to work on for now. This is a pair of jeans that I opened up and I embroidered on. I'll show you it a little closer. And these are kind of a unique design because they're an applique. And underneath here, this is fabric. And where you're seeing more of a rusty color, that's fabric in there, not stitching. So the actual stitching didn't take too long for this. Even in the leaves here, you'll see the, these green leaves and the brown ones that are up above. That was a shiny dress fabric that I put in there to kind of give it a little bit of a realistic look. But also, because there's not a lot of stitching in there, it's very soft and comfortable to wear. So whenever I'm doing anything on jeans, I'm going to be very careful about putting a design on that's too stiff and too uncomfortable. There was a question about what stabilizer did I use on the jackets? Now, and that is really a very important uh, question. So when I am embroidering on something, I want to think about what the inside is going to look like. A jacket is very likely the jacket's going to open. And so I always use a wash away stabilizer when I'm embroidering a jacket. Aquamagic is a, the most obvious because it'll go completely away. But look at how nice the inside looks. You don't see any stabilizer anywhere. If I had used a tearaway, you would have seen some of it and it wouldn't have been as invisible as that. When I'm doing jeans, like these jeans here, I used a walk, I just used a regular tearaway. I used a white bobbin and the stabilizer's just gone. I, I tore it away and it went away. A lot of the different projects, when you're looking at things, think about how much, how important it is that the stabilizer not show up. Anything that you know you're going to see the front and the back is not good to use a tearaway stabilizer because you're going to see that stabilizer. Whereas if you're using something on jeans, you're never going to see the inside. As a, your denim gets washed, any little, little bit of a tearaway stabilizer that's left, it's going to disappear. You're not going to see it. So it's not worth uh, using the stabilizer. Now, in this uh, jacket that I'm wearing right here, I used a tear away because I knew I was going to keep it buttoned up. And I have designs for all here. And then I have them on the back also. And I used a combination of embroidery and also free motion. We're going to go over and look at our hoops and talk about what would be best to use a metal hoop or a regular hoop and for what projects. So I'm going to go over to the machine 
And let me just whip this one right here. All right. I'll catch up with you in a second. So if I am working on a jacket or something that I want, when I'm in embroidery here, I'm going to go to embroidery. If I'm working on something where I know that I don't want the stabilizer to show, I will have hooped a wash away stabilizer. Whether I'm using the metal hoop or whether I'm using a regular hoop. So these are wash away stabilizers. I've got the metal in place and I actually have the, the metal cap hoop there also. And if I wanted to add some embroidery to this, let me just choose a design. So let's say I wanted to do a thread velvet design. Well, in many of our newer machines, let me just see if you can see this, all right? If I wanted to find thread velvet designs on a, like a Brilliance 80, a Sapphire 85, a Ruby 90, I can go into embroidery and look at all of my embroidery techniques. If I wanted to find cutwork needles, I could go here and it would bring up all the cutwork needle designs that I would want to see that are built into my machine. So when they show up, I know those are all cutwork needle designs. Back uh, with the diamond and the ruby, uh, the ruby um, royale, they don't have the ability to sort designs like this, but you can find the information in their owner in the owner's sample book. But I'm going to bring up a design just so you can see what happens. So when I look at that design, if I want to see which colors I'm going to use the cutwork needles with, I can go up and it will show me a picture of the cutwork needles right here. It will give me all that information and I can read how to do it right in my machine now. Now, this is an app that we have on our phone. So for those of you that don't have some of the newer machines that have the um, Wi-Fi compatible, on your phone, there's an app called the Joy OS Advisor, and you can download it and look at it, and it will show you um, all the information about how to use the cutwork needles or how to use the hoops. So a lot of times what, you're, what you should be thinking of is start with, how big is the design? If I've got a design that's 360 by 200, I can't use a metal hoop. And so it's not a simple question of, well, do I use a metal hoop or do I use a regular hoop? You have to know how big the design is. If the design will fit in a metal hoop, then a metal hoop is perfect. But if it's a design that's much, much bigger, then you've got to kind of think outside the box a little bit about what you like and what you're going to be doing. So let's say I go to the library, all right? I'm going to go to my Sonet uh, library and I have these this flower design that I like. I could search for border designs, all right? And when I do that, it will bring me up all kinds of really fabulous designs, all right? And you can keep looking and looking and looking but we have a ton of border designs that are just perfect for denim. I use this design right here. And so what I did is I sent that design to my designer Epic 2. Now, when it goes there, you heard that click, that design is gonna be 360 by 200. So the metal hoop is out of the question in that case. And so you won't use the metal hoop. That's really what you're thinking when you're making a decision is what hoop is gonna work for your project. Not what is best, but what's gonna fit. So now, let me go over back to this. And now I have that design in there. And I'm gonna get rid of the other design. Whoops, I deleted that one there. So right now, when I choose a design, I'm going by the hoop size that I want. You have all those hoops because you've got options. So as you choose a design, I'm gonna go back to the Joy OS Advisor and show you the thread velvet designs. So if you go to surface embroidery 
and you wanted to see all of the thread velvet designs that are built into your hoop, then all you do is touch thread velvet, and then it will bring you all the designs that are thread velvet designs. This is something that's so easy to do, and sometimes we forget about checking to do that, but it really does help when you bring up a design that you know that they're gonna have the thread velvet, and down below is all the instructions on how to do it. So that's what you'll find in your app when you look in your app. Now, hold on a second here. I'm just gonna get a couple of different things. I'm gonna move some things out of the way here. And we're gonna come back and let's look at the jacket that I have here. All right. So when you're looking at this design, you can see how big it is, right? One design, that's how big it is. So if I was going to hoop this, I wouldn't hoop it. I would hoop my stabilizer and I would use the Aqua Magic and I'm going to use the fix button to anchor it in place. And then when I've done that, I won't have to worry about it moving and I'll know it's exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to move up over here. I've lost one of my pairs of denim jeans. I'm just trying to put my hand on it. That I've done. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Now, I'm going to send this design to my screen. And I'm going to show you what I did with it. All right. So, it's a really pretty design. I can see it comes in in the 360 by 200 hoop. When you look at it, you can see my jeans that I've actually done. There's some pretty designs and I've kind of changed the color and I've added a few flowers here and there. So I've got one leg done. So if you're gonna do anything with a denim jeans, you've got to open up the seam. So the very first thing I did, was open up the seam so that it would be um, there. Now, I wanted to add some more flowers to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send that to my computer, all right? I can choose to send it to my computer and then I'll be able to go over there and cut away part of it so that I can add more to my designs. So now on my computer, I wanna make some more of these flowers. Like I wanna make this a little bit wider. So all I need to do is go to modify and I can do it freehand. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so it's closer so you can see it. I'm gonna just choose freehand and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut around, all right? I wanna keep all of this. And I could have also used point select if you don't have a steady hand. Now, I don't want to take away the original. I want to leave it there. I just want to add more. So what I'm going to do is touch copy and go back out to the home page and then touch paste. And so now I have extra flowers that I can place them where I want them to be. I can mirror image them and I could decide exactly where I want them to be. Now I could combine them here, or I could just send the design back to the screen, that little one design, let me get rid of this. I could just send these extra flowers there. I could also cut them up into smaller pieces too, if I wanted to, but I'm gonna get rid of that bigger design. I wanna send this back to my machine, so I'll have it there. And then we're gonna talk about how I can hoop my, my next denim jeans that I've got here. So here is the last project that I worked on. And these are a pair of jeans I bought at a thrift store. They were brand new, still had the tags on them. Nobody had ever worn them. But what I loved about them was that they had this little cutout at the bottom to make them be more of like a bell bottom. And I kind of like that. I like them to fit top up top tight and on the bottom to have a little bit of uh, extra space. So what I want to do is I might want to add some more flowers in this area here. Well, that's a perfect thing to use a metal hoop for because I don't want to use the whole design. I just want to 
bring in a little bit more and do it. So you kind of think about the process, what part of the design you're going to work with. And now when I go back over there, that piece should be over there and I can play with that. So I tend to move designs back and forth. If there's any reason I want to cut them apart, then I'm going to do that. And let me go back to my machine and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's see if it's there. All right. Did it go? Maybe I didn't send it. Let's hold on here and I'll just send it right back. And now I'm going to go and send it to my machine. There we go. And it should pop in there. Right. So right now I've done the major part of the design. I only want to add this to it. So I'm going to delete the bigger one. And in this case, I'm going to use the metal hoop. So the metal hoop that I have, let's see what size it is. It's 180 by 130. Will this fit in the 180 by 130? Well, look at that. It fits perfectly, right? So then that means I'm going to use that hoop. I'll put on my embroidery foot. And then when I go, press go, I'm going to have everything selected. And I, I'm not going to actually embroider this, so don't worry. It tells me to put my fabric on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in place. All right. And then I'm going to put the magnets on top. This is where I want to add my flowers right here. Now, if I was using the sticky stabilizer, this all the fabric would sit nice and flat and it wouldn't go anywhere. But if not, I might want to add an extra magnet or two just to kind of hold it in, in a different place. And you can kind of see there's the design that I've done. And this is where I want to add the design. So I can use design positioning to go in and do it. Or if I wanted to, I could have actually taken a picture with the app and uh, send the so monitor app and sent it to my phone. And then I would have the picture of what I've got in my hoop on the screen. So I'm going to come back. But this is very easy to hoop using the metal hoop. Let me come back. Let's see if there's any questions. And this is a pair of denim jeans that I use the felting needles. So in this case, there's no thread. The felting needle, you put the felting needle on. And on the inside, you don't see any thread. What happened is the felting needle distressed the denim. And so this was pretty easy. I used the metal hoop for this. Even though it was up by the waist, I didn't need to take the garment apart. I just used the felting needle to uh, hold it in place. And it pushed the fibers through. So when you're doing denim, if this is your outside of your denim, you're going to hoop it so that the right, the right side is face down on the machine. And there's, in this case, you can just hoop the fabric. That a question about, does the app work with the metal hoops? Not in the traditional way that you would do it. If you were using the app, what I like to do is, and if you want to do this, you certainly can, the, the app needs to see the edge, the inside edge of your hoop. So you can lay the fabric underneath the hoop, take your picture, send it and then afterwards put it on top like you'll have to mark where you where you have your fabric but that's a way of doing it if you want to do that and um it kind of gives you an idea what it's going to look like what i love about sending the picture from the app to your machine is you get an idea if you like the colors maybe the yellow like for example oh that's that's a rose maybe the yellow of a butterfly won't show up on the background fabric. So you realize you need to make your fabrics brighter. It gives you a real sense of control when you can see what you're embroidering on the back. The uh, When I come over here, right now you're looking at those colors. You don't know what they're going to look like on the denim, but when you actually see what they look like on the screen, it helps a lot to be able to figure out what you're going to be doing. Now, I certainly can change the colors, right? 
I can do it here, but it's much, much more visible to be able to do it and see it on the screen. When you're doing any kind of embroidery and you want decorative stitches on there, or you want to add some embellishing to it, anytime you're going to do that, if you can have that picture of what you're embroidering on this on your screen of your sewing machine, you're better off. But not everybody has that option. So, you know, if, if you can't see it there, then at least you can kind of visualize it by making your background color um, the color that you think you might like. It. Like I could change the background color on my machine so that you would be able to see what, you know, a darker blue, what the, the image would look like on a dark blue fabric. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm going to go and show you the uh, metal hoop and the, the um, difference when you're doing a regular hoop and you're placing it in there. Anytime I can, I'm going to hoop my fabric. I know a lot of you love to float your fabric, float your embroidery designs that you're doing, but I love to actually hoop my fabric because I can control how much stretch there is to it. I know that when I'm doing a denim jacket or a, like this, this does have a little bit of stretch to it. Many jeans these days have a lot of stretch to it. So if you put your fabric in the hoop, you know how much you've stretched it as you're going. And that's the kind of thing that I like to have that kind of control. So I would probably, if I'm doing something like a denim jacket or anything that has a lot of stretch, uh, and it's a large design, I'm always going to hoop it rather than float it. And and it's just a personal choice that I do, but I think you will find you'll get better results. Certainly, if you're doing anything like the silk, if, if you just float the silk, it'll have a tendency to move in and you're not going to get as nice a stitch out. So let me just bring this up and put it up here so I don't have a naked mannequin here. All right. And let's go back and look at the software for a second. So when you're working in any designs and you're looking for some, if you're looking for cut work needles and you go to the library, you want to check out and make sure if I put cut work needles, all right, it will bring up anything that's got the word cut work in it. So you need to kind of check, are they using cut work needles or not? So when I touch a design right here, I do not see the symbol of a needle. That means that is not using the cut work needles. And in this case, you really don't need it because they're very large areas. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a cut work needle design, you will see on the screen, when you bring up a cut work needle design, you will actually see the physical picture of a needle and then you'll know that that's the way it's going to work all right i'm going back over and let's look at our designs i'm going to go back to the cut work needle design okay and if i go to cut work embroidery and cut work needles And I choose a design that's a cut work needle because I want to add this to this design that I'm working on. I always check the colors and I will see usually at least two needles. Usually the red and the yellow are used all the time. And then when you look at the package of cut work needles, the red and the yellow are the first two that are there. So in this case, I will just leave my machine threaded as normal. And then when it's time to do color number four, I will take the thread out of the top and the thread out of the bottom. And there won't be any thread. And I'm going to just replace the needle. And your needle is going to cut away the area that needs to be cut. And then when it comes to color number six, it will be time to put your thread back in. And you'll put your bobbin thread and your top thread in. So it's very, very easy to control using cutwork needle. If you have never done cutwork needle, maybe it's great. Look for a design that you like. There's a lot of pretty designs out there on all of our machines that use the cutwork needle. So it doesn't take a lot. I should have set one up so I can show you to do it. Another time I'll think about doing that. But I want to just give you an example. 
Okay, this is a jacket that came from a thrift store. It's pretty wild. It's a heavy winter jacket. I'm going to be embroidering on this. So first of all, I have to figure out what stabilizer, how I'm going to take the lining out. In this case, the lining is separate, so I can just pull the lining back. If it is a jacket that's got like a leather jacket, you may need to open up the back and pull the lining away so that you don't have to go through all of that. So the first thing you're going to think about before what hoop to use is what are you going to use as far as are you going to have to open up the jacket? Are you going to have to open up the sleeve? Are you going to open up the leg? And then you're going to decide what design you're going to use. And then you decide what hoop you're going to use. The reason we have so many hoops is because they are a lot of different designs that will work in different size hoops. So um, it is always a matter of choose your design, then think about what hoop you're going to use. Where, there was a question about the cutwork needles and the stitch plate. When you're using the cutwork needles, that and whenever we're doing any embroidery, we always recommend you use the straight stitch plate. And that means the needle is going to go through the center and it's not going to distort the fabric very much. And if you're going to change to put cutwork needle on, like right now, I'm going to go over and I'm going to put the cutwork needle on and you're going to see, I also have to put my foot on, you're going to see the differences when it comes to doing that kind of thing. All right. So uh, we've got 15 minutes left. I'm going to go and start that cutwork needle design so you can see what that's like. And then I'll come back and check for questions. Okay. All right. Now I want to add this design. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my embroidery foot on. And then I have a color that's going to be in the top. I've used my metal hoop. All right. And when you go to put on your, your sensor cue foot, if for any of you that have trouble and you find it's hard, all you have to do is turn the needle down into the hole and the foot goes right in place. So it should be easy when you put the sensor cue foot on. All right. And just by making the needle go down into the hole, that's going to make it super easy to get your sens sensor cue foot off. And I think that's a good reminder because a lot of times people think it's difficult. Now, the color that is just before the cutwork needles all right, would be the green. What it's going to do is it's going to go and outline the area that the cut work is going to be done. In this case, I have 60 white bobbin thread in the bottom. So I'm looking at the color before and going to that color. And now I'm going to put on my thread. One second here. Pull my needle back up. And I'm going to use my automatic needle threader. If you haven't seen how the automatic needle threader works, it's really very cool. You bring your thread up, you cut it away, and then you touch the automatic needle threader, and it threads your machine for you. Isn't that wild? So the very first stitch. Now, do I know where this design is going to be? I can quickly find out. But I'm going to fill this area with a lot of different designs. So I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to press, wait a second, I got to go. All right. Oh, hold on a second here. I didn't choose the right hoop that I'm using. I changed my mind. I need to go to the 180 by 130 hoop. And I'm going to just hold on a second here. Shrink the design. All righty. So I'm using the 180 by 130 metal hoop. So I choose 180 by 130 M. And instead of doing all of the colors, because I don't want to bore you, I'm just going to go to the color before the cutwork needle. All right. And we'll let that go for a second. So what's happening is it's doing the color and it'll go around and leave you the outline 
for you to be able to see where to cut the cutwork needles are gonna go. I'm not gonna leave it run because I don't wanna use too much time. But on your machine, you can see where it's doing the stitching. After it finishes this color, it's going to tell you, put the cutwork needle on, put the red cutwork needle, and then you're going to go around and put the red cutwork needle in, and it will stitch around that area, and then you will cut that, that fabric will be cut away, and it'll just pull away. So I'm always watching where that design is showing me. And if I just want to see where it's doing the cutwork needle, when I choose the cutwork needle, you'll see it shows up right there. So it's very visual on your machine. You don't have to guess. I know that the cutwork needles are gonna cut right there. And then I, when I go to the next cutwork needle, it'll be in the same space. They both go in the same space. It's just the angle is different. So then when that's done, then I put my thread back in and it's gonna stitch through all that area. Using a cutwork needle is very, very simple. It's just watching your machine and it will tell you what to do. Does anybody have any questions about that? So I'm gonna go back and let's just take the cutwork needle off. And I wanna look at this and show you how we close these things up. Mm -hmm. So when I'm ready, I finished my embroidery and I'm ready to close it back up. Usually what I'm gonna do is I will take my sewing machine and sew it straight up. Start at the bottom. You noticed I unhemmed it because these have quite a few extra inches on the bottom. So I'm gonna put the right sides together and sew it. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go on my serger to finish the edge. Because every time you look at pants like this, they have that nice surged edge. So if you have a serger, use the serger. Somebody has a question. The directions on the sewing machine says to remove the top, but leave the bobbin thread in. No, I, I, one way or another, I, whether the directions say to or not, you should take the bobbin out when you're doing cutwork needles, because that thread is down below in that bobbin, right? And the cutwork needles coming up and down. I just like to get all of the thread away from the machine. It I, Maybe some people leave it in, but it is much better advice to take the bobbin out and take the top thread out. Because if the bobbin's spinning around or the thread's wandering around in there, it's gonna cause you problems later on. So it's much better to take both of them out. And then once you've finished, put your bobbin back in, put your top thread back in. I know some people who, when they're uh, doing a cutwork needles, they will leave the thread up into the guide and they've just taken it out of the needle. Well, that's horrible because that thread is just very loose in your tension going up and down and floating. And your bobbin thread can do the same thing. So it's much better advice to take both of them out. Even if it, if it says you can leave it in, I personally, I would take it out. I always do. There's not two cutwork needles. There's a question, why is there two cutwork needles? There are actually four cutwork needles. And each one of them has got an angle that's cut away. So if one of them, if you think about the way the compass works, right? One of them might have an angle cut at 90 degrees. One of them might have it at 45. Each one of those has a different angle. And so when you're doing a cutwork design and it's cutting, going in different directions, like maybe it's a design where it's going up over here and then over here, it will only cut the areas that it will cut well with that angle of blade. And so any design that has got asked for two needles, you're gonna put those two needles in. You will see many designs that will have four needles. And in that case, you're gonna put them in in the order they tell you. It's very, very intuitive because it'll ask for the red needle first and then the yellow needle. And then if it's gonna ask for more needles, it will tell you. So you don't have to guess. You don't have to you know, figure it out. It shows you exactly what you need to do. So um, another question was about changing the back. Would you like to see how to change the background? I can show you that. 
Anything else you want to know? Because I'm going to come back. Whoops. I'll come back and I'll show you. Now, right now, I have my background in a blue. Many, many of our machines, you can change your background color. I'm going to go back. And it, take my hoop off. Now, right now, my color is blue. If, right, if you're looking at the grid right here, if you touch and hold, it pops up with the colors. If you have a Diamond Royale or some of the other machines, you would find that on the um, back on the, the original page before you come into your embroidery screen. So if I want to change and make the background black, now it'll show me black. Now, if I don't want the grid on, I just touch. So the grid is just touch on or touch off. And if you want to change the background color, touch and hold, and it will show you all the background colors. You can also change the grid size by going here and choose inches or millimeters, what size you want that grid to be. So if I want it to be an inch, now it'll come on and be an inch. So our, the screen is meant to be very easy to use. And you can touch things and deselect them any way you want to. You can move the design. I personally like the grid to be turned off because I want to see the design exactly what it looks like. But sometimes you might find it helps to have that on. So when you're looking at that, do you notice that there's a, a basting line that goes around the outside edge? That is very important to know when you're doing cutwork designs. That basting line is there because after you have cut away the material with your cutting needle, their fabric is kind of loose, right? There's a big hole in your fabric. And so the idea is supposed to be that that is a fixed stitch and you'll lay a piece of wash away stabilizer underneath it. And then it will stitch around and now you'll have some support to your fabric. That's an important thing to do when you wonder, you see that basting stitch, it'll always be the next one after the cutting needles. And you'll say, well, what's it for? It's because your fabric has no support. And after the, cup, the fabric's been cut away or the leather or vinyl, then it needs to have some support so that it doesn't uh, start to move and fluctuate. What I'm gonna do next, after I lay the stabilizer underneath and I touch the start button, it will base the stabilize the wash away stabilizer, and then it will just continue embroidering like nothing happened. So very, very simple and very easy to do. So remember, some designs will use two cutwork needles and some will use four, but it's a personal choice. Now, when you look at the back of my embroidery, all right, there is my back of my embroidery. I did it with black bobbin thread this case. It's got a lot of stretch to it and a lot of pull it ironed out really really easy and anything you want to and so think through the process as you go in these denim jeans I, I'll pull them inside out so you can see. They actually don't have a lot of stitching in them. You'll see the fancy roses, but there's no stitching in a lot of this because it's an applique fabric. So if you see some nice applique designs, they're really nice to use uh, when you're doing denim or anything like that. And look at how beautiful they ended up being. So you could see this on a jacket. You could see it, you know, think about, how that design could be done. If you want something that's a little more subtle, then you know you can easily go in and choose a tone on tone design like I did with the silk over here. So this is a little bit different. Usually we don't talk about you know garments and ready-made. We usually make our jackets, make our projects, but I love what you can do with garments that are ready-made where you can go into the store, pick them up, and then just add some embellishment. And if you like to play, you can always add something to your children's or grandchildren's garments. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you again soon. Sorry for my voice being so hoarse.
Bye, everybody.